So we've already met and talked. You prefer students to call you Mr. S? Yeah. Is that just normal? Oh. Or? Uh, just because it's easier. Because mm -hmm. my last name's Santa Maria, mm -hmm. and normally they forget it about halfway through, so they call me Mr. Santa, and so <laughs> Mr. S is just fine. All right. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a bit about yourself? So, like your past teaching, you know? Uh, yeah, so um, I graduated college in 2013, Wabash College, uh, which is an all male school. And then I went to the University of Illinois for graduate school, and I graduated there in 2016 with my master's in teaching. Um, and my first job I got right after that was actually in Battle Creek uh, at the Battle Creek Math and Science Center. And I taught there for two years, and now this is kind of my first job at a real high school. <laughs> And so where is Wabash? Uh, yeah, Wabash College. It's in Crawfordsville, Indiana, which is basically the middle of nowhere in Indiana. <laughs> is that where you grew up? Yep, I grew up in Crawfordsville, and then I stayed in Crawfordsville for college. So. Okay. Um, what's your kind of outside of school life like? Like, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> There's not much. There's not much outside of school life. Uh, I have a wife, Denise. Uh, my mom's name. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's spelled uh, kind of different. And my son's name, Jackson. He's J-A-X-O-N. Um, so that's most of my time. We just bought a new house. Um, we just moved into the Kalamazoo area, got our first house. Um, so my life outside of school right now is doing all the things you never knew you had to do when you get a house. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. mowing the lawn. Right? <laughs> you don't think about it. Right, so we had to go out and buy a lawnmower. So, yeah. Wait till the winter's come, you know, you have to get a snow. Yeah, we got to get <laughs> snow shovels, we had to get gloves, just all these little things. So I've been to Lowe's more times in this past week than I think I ever had in my entire life. Yeah. So. Um, so what are some of the things you do for fun? Just go to Lowe's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nowadays, yeah. Um, no, we're uh, pretty outdoorsy, my wife and son and I, so um, we like to go camping, like uh, tent camping. Um, we do a lot of hiking, uh, canoeing, things like that, um, when we get the chance, but that's mainly during the summer. Um, I play some Fortnite, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good at that. So those are, that's kind of my life, is anything my son's doing, I'll do with him. Yeah, you're getting all the wins? <laughs> I do, I have a lot of dubs, yeah. you got to teach me how to play. I've, I've got like, I think I have over like 400 dubs. Please teach me. Yeah. I can't, I can't get a win for the life of me. Um, why do you like teaching? Why is it something that interests you? Um, that's a good question, huh? Why am I doing what I'm doing yeah. with my life? Uh, I don't know. I, it, so I, when I was at the University of Illinois, I was a teaching assistant for their general chemistry courses. So you spend some time as a TA there, and then you spend other time in research. And I just found that the most fun of my, part of my day was when I was teaching the students chemistry. And I always had a passion for chemistry, like I was really good at it. Um, but then I realized my bigger passion was actually in teaching, right? And just kind of that light bulb moment where all I really have to do is give someone a look or say something a certain way, and they're like, oh, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And um, especially teaching a science, um, there's, we have very low numbers in science, especially females in science. Um, and so I thought it was really important to be a science teacher. Um, and since that's where my kind of passion was already in chemistry, and I enjoyed seeing people learn science, I kind of put those two things together. Yeah, that's really cool that you just, you like seeing that moment in the yeah. students when yeah. you get it. Um, kind of, this is kind of a silly question, but Michigan or State? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not from Michigan. But if you had to choose, Definitely know? Michigan State. My right. family is from Michigan, and they've been State fans, um, but I'm actually um, more of an Indiana fan, so. But yeah, if, I, if Michigan State were playing Michigan, I'd probably be rooting for Michigan State. All right, well, we'll get along. <laughs> okay, good, yeah. How did you come to Gull Lake? Why not stay at uh, you want the honest answer? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, so um, Battle Creek, so I was already living in Kalamazoo, and Battle Creek was a pretty considerable commute, um, and that was, I took the job there because it was the first people that offered me a job, and as trying to get your first job, you'll take anything you can get, yeah. right? Um, and I got there, and it's a math and science center, so it's, it's a nice building, right? It's a really nice building. I don't know if you've ever been, but... Nice building, the students are all like on top of their game, so it's kind of like teachers have it really easy there, right? Like the students will do what you tell them, they'll get their homework done, and you really have very little work to do as a teacher. Um, but what I realize is because it's a math and science center, I'm getting students from Lakeview, Battle Creek, Marshall, Penfield, all over the place there. And there was no kind of school pride, right? Because all the students are from different schools. 
Um, so it's not like I could go out Friday to a football game and all my students would be there. There might be one student playing another student, right? Or I couldn't go to any basketball games or even like homecoming rallies, right? They just don't have those. Um, and so I wanted a school where I felt like I was really a teacher, yeah. right? Where I could be a part of the school and that they kind of had some sort of community already. And, right, and Gull Lake, from everyone that I talk to, like it's very community driven. Uh, seems like a family here, so. Yeah, and but, you're obviously repping them with your shirt. Yeah, right. I'm already. I've already got you're the Gull Lake swag. Right? So. Um. So, do you plan to be kind of hosting any clubs or? I would sports? love to host some clubs. Uh, I don't know what anyone would be interested in, but if anyone's interested, they should let me know. I was um, at the Manton Science Center. I did rocketry, um, so they built their own rocket and launched it a couple times. Um, so I'd be interested in doing that. But anyone that is looking to do a club and they need someone to sponsor them. <laughs> I'm You're there. I'm there, yeah. It's Whatever it is, I can learn it. about it, yeah. <laughs> so we talked a little, you're changing the curriculum a bit. How, can you explain kind of what that is? Um, yeah, it's really hard to explain, but, um, so it's modeling curriculum, and you can probably you see the whiteboards, yeah. right? Um, so essentially the idea is, instead of me saying or lecturing, here is some equation, now go into lab and see if that holds true. Instead, I say, okay, go into lab, and what do you find? And then students can derive the equation, right? So they can see these two variables have this relationship. Oh, that means this is the equation, right? So it's kind of inverse or backwards learning, right? Where they go out and solve a problem, and they work together, they model it on their whiteboards, they come to a group consensus, and I'm kind of there on the sidelines giving them nudges in the right direction. There's actually very little time where I'll be lecturing or writing on the board and it's more students learning from doing things, students learning from each other. Now, I see how that would work, but to kind of challenge that a little bit, yeah. I mean, no disrespect. No, no, but sure. What about the students that learn better through oh, yeah. the lecture? Yeah, so, um, like, tell me what I need to know, mm -hmm. I'll go home and know it, and then I'll be good, right? Yeah. Like those, I've gotten A's doing that, yeah. and so I'm changing the game. Um, and that's kind of what school is, right? The teacher tells you what you need to know, and then you memorize it or whatever it might be. Um, and that works for a lot of students, but it also doesn't work for some. And what studies have found is that you may know it, but by next year or the year after, you don't really know it because someone told you, right? Someone said, this is what you need to know and this is why it is so. But if you go through the process of, I understand that there is a problem and now I understand how I got to the solution to the problem, Right? If you go through the process of learning it that way, you'll remember it longer. Right? So um, there's been a lot of studies that show that. Um, and just in my experience, it seems to be more fun that way too. I don't know many people that want to sit there and lecture. As a teacher, it's hard for me to do. Um, as a student, it might be hard to sit through. Um, but yeah, I definitely, like, I know that a lot of students are happy with the way things are mm -hmm. and that change is hard. Um, but hopefully, if you give me time, you can see that you're making some pretty big gains as a student. So that's how you kind of deal with the students that are more comfortable with the traditional yeah. way. You kind of just warm them up to it. Yeah, yeah. I basically say, I know probably the first month, maybe even two months, you're not going to like me. And you might not <laughs> even like the course. Um, but hopefully by the end of the year, you can realize how much you've grown as a learner. And hopefully that's worth it in the end. Um, but yeah, I'm always open to criticism. I'm always open to, to if a student says this isn't working and I want to do it this way, I'm open to that. Okay. That's really cool that you're open to, well, a student knows this works for me. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, did, have you met Mr. Portis? Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> um, I met him over the summer. Uh, met, uh, we met up a couple times, actually. He kind of talked to me about the building, the room, and then just the chemistry course in general. So, I've, yeah, I've met him. I've heard a lot about yeah. him, too. There were some rumors going around, like, he interviewed you, you himself for no. the position. No, he was, not he was not involved in the interview process. I don't know how much he wants me to share, um, but he felt like it should be um, that he had kind of had his go of it, and he wanted someone else kind of to come in and, and do their own thing. Yeah. Do, do you feel pressure kind of following him? <laughs> After the students, you know the yes. students loved him. Yeah, they loved him. Um, yeah, absolutely, I do. Uh, like, so I, I bought my first house this summer. My realtor 
um, asked what I did, and I said, oh, I'm, the, I'm a chemistry teacher at, at Gold Lake. She goes, oh, you're replacing Mr. Portis. Mm -hmm. And then we had our home inspector come in, he goes, oh, you're replacing Mr. Portis. And then everyone I've talked to is, oh, you're replacing Mr. Portis. Everyone knows who this guy is. Uh, so yeah, obviously I feel a lot of pressure, yeah. Um, yeah, he was, he was loved by everyone here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I've noticed. We can, I'm sure you're gonna do Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, um, everyone tells me I have big shoes to fill, um, but I just, I figure I'll wear my own shoes and, <laughs> yeah. and hopefully fit in eventually, so. Yeah, you're, you seem to be doing great. I've asked some students about you and they say they like it so far. I hope so, so far. Yeah. <laughs> it's before you've gotten mean, right? Right, yeah, we haven't had the first test yet, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what's your electronics policy? It kind of changes between teacher. And yeah. Teacher. See, and that, that I'm not a very big um, rules person, right? So um, basically I say you respect me and trust me and I will respect and trust you. Um, so I don't have a policy that says put your phones away, but if I ask you to put your phone away and focus, I expect that you would do it, right? Um, I don't have a policy that says you must put your phone in this bin when you walk in or you can't ever be on your phone. Because there are times, especially in science, you need to be on your phone. I want you to look something up. I want you to collect data on your phone or something like that. So. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe as time goes on, I'll realize I'll have to have more <laughs> rules, but right now maybe I'm kind of naive, and I think that if I can trust you and respect you, that you should reciprocate that trust, and uh, so yeah. Yeah, I really respect that. I respect you treating the students like they're equals rather than, I'm in charge of right. you, you got to put it right, in. Right, yeah, and every meeting I've ever gone to as a teacher, yeah. right, with other teachers, yeah. they say, yeah, you can get your phone out if you need to, if it's an emergency, um, but pay attention to what's going on and everything should be fine, mm -hmm. so. Obviously, there are going to be people that um, take advantage of that policy, and that's when I feel like I'll have to start to change, but as long as I don't encounter that all too often. Yeah, there's always going to be someone who's like, well, I'm just yeah. going to push yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with students who consistently act up? Do you just kick them out or try and give them a few chances? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's probably some policy that I'm supposed to follow. I would imagine that there's, there's something... Some, there's some teachers that are just done with it, you know. At, yeah, so point. my philosophy would be that um, if they're acting out, there's a reason, right? There's probably something else at home going on or there's something that's not clicking in the classroom. Um, and the last thing I would want is for them to not be in the classroom because then they just miss more time, mm -hmm. right? Um, but yeah, what do I do with someone that's consistently acting out? I don't really know. I, <laughs> It's a case-by-case -case basis, yeah. I would imagine, right? And I think part of it is just if I know my students well enough, then perhaps I have a better chance of knowing why that's happening and perhaps preventing it. Um, I haven't, and like I said, I worked in the Math and Science Center for two years. Students didn't really act out. So far, I haven't had any <laughs> discipline issues, right? And so I don't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm a young teacher, so I, I really don't know what I would do, and I would hope that I know my students well enough that we could work through it together. You're learning through experience. Yeah. Fantastic. Anything else you want your, the student body to know? Um, give me a chance. Come talk to me. I haven't, uh, I haven't met too many students outside of um, the classes that I teach. I'd really like to uh, be more part of the family. And if anyone has sporting events they think I should go see, that's why I came here. I want to go be a part of the family. So <laughs> There's a varsity soccer game at 6.30. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm going to try and go to as much as I can, so yes. as long as I know about them. It's Friday, so try and be there. All right, yeah, I can do that. Thank you so much for meeting yeah, me. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I'll try and publish the truth, obviously. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> would appreciate that, words. yeah. We met on the first day.